Seasonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Wolf for Kit Guru here at Nangang. I've bumped into the Australians hardware unboxed. We're just going to have a quick rattle through what we've seen at the show. But first, Tim, I think of him as Mr. Monitor. Uh, <laughs> what has NVIDIA done at the show? Uh, well, they've sort of updated their G-Sync Ultimate branding with some new monitors. So G-Sync Ultimate was kind of a rebrand of G-Sync HDR from whenever they launched that, maybe like a year ago or so. Uh, and yeah, we've seen some new monitors. I think ASUS was the big one. They kind of had a few different types of things coming out. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. The ASUS mini LED monitor, if you check that out, it's yes. just, just over there. Yeah, that looks really awesome. So yeah, it's just bringing HDR up to, to a new level and I'm excited to check that out, I think. With the ASUS monitor, the 27-inch the 4K everything monitor was yeah. like 2,000 UK pounds. So I saw that and I thought, okay, how much? My, my immediate thought was yes, but price. Well. To be fair, Asus wouldn't tell me, but they did say it would be more expensive than the other one. They were, I think they were a bit worried that if they told me a price, it would change, because I think last time they announced a lower price and it ended up being way more expensive. So I think they're trying to avoid that again. Yeah, exactly. No, we, we had this with Asus. I think they told the price of one monitor. Everything else was like, we don't know. Even the headphones, they didn't know. Yeah. Navi graphics. Speculate or... Oh, wow. I, I, how do I, why do I get the easy questions over here? Uh, I wouldn't dare speculate, but I think it's a really good step in the right direction, separating the architectures. I think our DNA is probably what they needed to do. Based on what AMD is saying, it's going to be a little bit faster, a fair bit more efficient, but beyond that, I wouldn't dare speculate as to how it's going to go. But I think it's, like I said, a step in the right direction, and I'm not sure what we'll see for this first iteration, but I think down the line it will be the way to go for gamers. It, it amazes me. We, we know nothing. We know almost nothing about Navi apart from 7 nanometer. We think <laughs> RTX 2070 territory. The fanboys and the, and the enthusiasts out there speculate like crazy. They're either saying it's the best thing ever or writing it off. The pros are going, I've not seen it. How the hell can I talk about it? Back to monitors and screens. Uh, for creators has been a theme. Yeah. Is it different to for gamers or is it just a branding thing? Yeah, you definitely want, when you're buying a monitor, you definitely have different things that you're looking for in a monitor for creators. You'd be looking at, say, IPS technology because of its good viewing angles, its really good color performance, as opposed to more your VA technology that gamers tend to like because of the contrast ratios. So, yeah, I think MSI's had some good creator monitors here at the show, so they're sort of getting into that territory, so I really like what they're doing. Um, in fact, on that score, as you mentioned MSI, their first 4K monitor, I had no idea they did not have 4K until this show. Yeah, it seems like in the space of two years, they've gone from having like one model to covering pretty much everything that you could possibly want. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what they're saying. I mean, they say they're the largest growing monitor brand, whether that's true or not, who knows? But yeah, certainly lots of models here. X570, Ryzen 3000, 16 core, obviously. Yeah. What's gonna really float your boat? Well, at the show, it's been great seeing all the X570 motherboards, and I think everyone's probably noticed they're really high quality now. So every board has a massive VRM on it, massive vCore VRM, uh, and yeah, so they're great looking boards. As for the, the Zen 2 CPUs, that's another Navi question. We'll have to wait till we test them, but they we, we obviously know where, set where they're coming from with second gen Ryzen. We can only assume they're going forwards with that. So it's gonna be pretty great. Uh, how great? Well, we'll wait for the reviews. Uh, and then the 16 core part, I'm still not 100% sure whether we'll see that this year or even for this revision of Ryzen 3000. Uh, what would they call it, for example? Would it be the Ryzen 10? Because it's not going to be the Ryzen 9. Ryzen 11, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, Tim and I have been going over the 16 core rumors for a while. We always, it's obviously possible. It technically exists now. The 12 core is a 16 core. Uh, so it, it already exists. There's no question whether it exists. It's when AMD feel the need to push it out. And it's obviously a market reaction thing. So, And I think they'd probably want to leave it for like a Zen 2 Plus type thing where they can, if they've only got a one or two IP, IPC uh, percent increase, the 16 core part would create a lot of hype and make it a really exciting launch. 
Now, we've all berated Intel for every time it's a new platform, new motherboard, even though the socket's the same, it's a whole new chipset, you can't put this, you have to motherboard and process it together. Mm -hmm. AMD's gone with AM4 to 2020, so we think it's going to be Zen 4, uh, so Zen 2, Ryzen 4000 yeah. might well go to AM4. I suspect so. Get the model codes right. I'm also getting the impression they're regretting sticking with it because of BIOS updates and this isn't compatible. It fits, but it ain't going to work. Do you think, with not quite hindsight, the thing of moving on, even though we hate Intel doing it, it's kind of got a clarity to it, or is AMD right? I think AMD's right to do that. I think it's a bad thing that Intel do it. It really should only be done when it's absolutely necessary for a socket change or memory support. I mean, we've seen that you can have different memory standards on the same platform, but I think that at least warrants, so G, uh, DDR5 rather would warrant the upgrade to a new AM4 Plus or whatever they want to do, AM5 or whatever they end up calling it. But yeah, beyond that, I don't think, a BIOS update's pretty simple. Um, I know the 300 series, there's a little bit of confusion there and there's BIOS size issues and things like that. Don't know why they can't offer multiple BIOS versions. 300 or 3000? Are the 300 series chipsets. Okay, right. So the, the 400 chipset, uh, 400 series chipsets, they all support no dramas at all, the BIOS updates. The 300 series, we've heard all kinds of speculation and drama there. Everyone we've spoke to said our full range, except for A320, will support Zen 2. So. And I think we can agree none of us care about A320, or, or I think anything with an A at the front is... I'm not, I'm not sure who recommended it. It's probably, it's, well, it's obviously an OEM chipset, but yeah, not worth buying. It was really no cheaper than the base model B350, so it never made any sense. True. And the final question to each of you is going to be, what's the best thing you've seen at the show? Oh, putting me right on the spot there, big time. Um, yeah, I mean, I was surprised at the amount of monitors at the show. So to see a mini LED from ASUS, I didn't think that would happen as quickly because they did on the creator side at CES. To get that in as quickly, I think, surprised me a lot. So that's probably my big one. But I also like the mini ITX motherboards for X570 because we brought a mini ITX system to edit here. So to do all of our you know video creation. So to be able to maybe next year bring a X570 mini ITX with a 12 core CPU on it is pretty exciting. So yeah, those two things I reckon. Same question to you, Steve? Yeah, there's been loads of exciting products, but for me it's the X570 motherboards for sure because I'm most interested in them. I'm excited to test them out. I'm honestly expecting them all to be really good though. I don't think there's, I haven't seen a bad one. Uh, even the base models have you know, really good feature sets, great VRM. So yeah, they've been good to see, but everything's great. There's great cases, great coolers. But yeah, for me it's the motherboards, I think. And judging by the comments below your video, very final question. When it comes to a new GPU launch, do you do all that game testing manually? Yes, yes. A busy, busy man. Thank you, chaps, appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you check out Hardware Unboxed, you will already know them. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is Computex 2019. Hit the bell button, return to us to see more videos.